So today we're going to talk about probably the most sexy subject you could ever talk about when it comes to WordPress, online forms. I know, calm yourself, calm yourself. But we're going to be taking a look at a plugin that I think really does help make these incredibly easy to build. And the best part is, it's completely free. So let's just jump into WordPress and take a look at what that plugin is and how we can use it. My name is Paul C and welcome to WP Tuts, where I show you how to create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon to be notified of our weekly new content as soon as it's added to the channel. So what is this free plugin to deal with forms that I'm talking about? Well, it's Happy Forms, who have kindly sponsored this video, but that in no way determines what I'm going to say about it. Okay, so Happy Forms, as its name suggests, it's a form building plugin for WordPress that is completely free. And why do I think it's worth sharing with you guys? Well, because I think it's very, very easy and it also has some really premium features in it that can help it set itself apart from some of the other free options out there. So let's just jump over into the dashboard and take a look at what it looks like, the interface we have to work with and how we can integrate that into our workflow and into our websites. So when you install Happy Forms, you're going to get a new entry in your dashboard, the Happy Forms section, which gives us three different distinct options. All Forms lists all the forms we've created. Add New allows us to go and create a new form. And finally, the Responses option shows us anybody that's actually submitted data through our form that we've set up to save into the database. Now, saving into the database is purely optional. And with the whole things to do with GDPR at the moment, it's worthwhile noting that you have options inside Happy Forms itself to have a confirmation that you can't go any further. You can't submit the form without agreeing to that. So you can tie that into your privacy policy and then make sure you cover yourself with any kind of GDPR compliance. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual interface itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, I'm going to say I'm going to add a new form in. So we'll click Add New. And you can see this brings up a really nice, simple, streamlined interface. We've got three distinct areas. We've got the left-hand section, which shows us all the different form elements we have. Currently, there's nothing in there. We can also name our form, and we can go through the three-step three process to complete setting up our form, styling it, and how we want to work with it. We then have all the different modules we can use, so things like short text, long text, email, website links, and so on. And then finally, we have a preview of what the form is going to look like on a blank page. Now, when we take a look at the modules, you can see there's quite a lot of things that we'd normally expect to see there. Things like short text, email address, phone numbers, and so on. But we also have some really nice additional options. Things like tables. We can have single choice or multiple choice options. Numbers, phone, date and time, address, and so on. But we can also do quite cool things like add a scaling there. So if we're asking someone to say rate our services from 1 to 10, we can input that in. We've also got things like then for legal, which, like I say, is to do with the GDPR compliance. So you can make sure that anybody that actually submits a form that contains data that is part of that compliance, you can make sure they check this off to make sure that they don't actually you know, have any legal comeback if you collect that information. You've also then got things like ratings, so you can put a, a one to five star rating, for example, for the service or the product that you're talking about. You also then have a placeholder for things like if you want to give information about maybe terms and conditions or what information you're going to sort of collect about them, you can drop that in there. But like I say, one of the nice things about Happy Forms is it's just incredibly simple and intuitive to work with. So let's just start off by creating a very simple form. So we'll just say this is going to be our feedback form. So you can see, as soon as I type that in, we get a little representation of that in the preview window. Now we can go through and start adding the various different elements we want in. So let's start off with something like a short text option. So we can just click on that. That'll insert it into our preview. And you'll see now on the left-hand side, where we've got the stack of all the different modules we have in our form. We've now got some of the basic information. So you can see at the moment, it just says text. So let's just change that to name. You can specify the placement of the actual placeholder text. So you can see we've got above, left, we have below, inside input area, and finally display as placeholder. So you have all the options you should ever need to make sure that you can style your forms the way that you want. So let's put that back to being above. Now there's also this option that says apply to all parts. Now at the moment that's not going to do anything, but what it'll do is if we go and throw our form, and let's just say for example on the fourth different section of our form we think actually I don't really like the placement of these sort of titles, then we can easily set that to where we want within the title placement option. 
and then we can say apply to all parts and then every part of our form will be updated to contain that new layout information which I think is really cool you no longer have to go through one by one to style these and change them next up we've got a description so we can just easily put a description of what this particular entry is all about and you can see that now displays it directly underneath we can also then enable this as a tooltip instead so we can clean up the way that our form looks you can see once we check that it puts a little question mark at the end when we take it over we now get a nice clean and simple tooltip we've also got the option there for a placeholder so let's just say we'll put in your first name and you can see once i do that it immediately adds that into our form element now you're probably wondering well if we do that and we change the title placement will that look a bit weird would it replace it well let's take a look we can say inside input and you can see it tells us what the name and it still keeps our nice placeholder information so it's a very intuitive form layer that allows you to sort of go in and tweak this to get exactly what you want without any real dramas you can specify then whether this is a required element, so that has to be filled out. You can see we get the little asterisk afterwards telling us this is a required form element. We could duplicate this, we can delete it, or we can click on done. Or we can open up advanced where we get some additional options. And the options that you have are based upon the different module that you actually are editing. So at the moment you can see we've got things like full. We can set that to be half width, or we can set it to be one third, so we can easily create a form that's nice and simple and compact without every single element having its own individual line. Then we can also apply custom CSS classes which we could then target either through an external style sheet or we could use it through a style sheet as part of our theme. In this example Ocean WP gives you that option but so do themes like Astra and Generate Press and most other themes will give you the option to be able to create custom CSS which you can then target any class you apply to anything inside Happy Forms. So as you can see so far, it's very easy to work with. We want to make changes. So let's just say we want to go back up and say this is now going to be first name. You can see everything is updated in real time. It's all very quick, very easy. So let's just add something else in. Let's just collapse this down. We'll just close that up. And let's just say we want to put an email link in there. Well, click. You can see that now adds that into our little sort of stacking section on the left-hand side. We can come in and we can go to our advanced section, set this to be half, and you can see it now just aligns itself exactly as we'd want. So, very easy to work with. Now, to go back to the title placement they're saying about where we have that sort of apply to all, you can see at the moment we have a bit of a mismatch between the first name and the email. They're not in the same positions. Well, what we could do is let's just say we want to put that to the below position. We could do that, and you can see it updates there. Now, because we've got additional form elements, we've changed something about the title placement. If I just check apply to all parts, you can see now it immediately changes anything that's in our form. I think this is a real time saver, one of those little golden nuggets that really do help set this apart from a lot of the other plugins out there for dealing with forms. So that's some of the basics ticked off. What other things do we have available? Well, let's take a look at something like this table element. We can insert that in there and you can see we've got a name. So it's calling it options. We can call it whatever we want. Let's just say we're going to call that sample table. Placement again, you can see all those options are there. And if we change something on this, we can apply it to all the parts we want to, whatever we want to do with that description. Again, we can drop that in there. But now we go down and you can see we've got things like each row is required or allow multiple selections. So whatever you think actually adds in and ties into what you need to do with this particular table, you can do that. Underneath, we've got the columns and rows. So you can see it tells us there's no columns added yet and obviously no rows. So we can say add a column, give this a label, and we'll just call this column one. Do you want to check it by default? Well, that's up to us. We can jump into the rows. So let's just say let's add a couple of rows. So we'll just say this is row one and we'll say add another row and we'll call this row two uh, as you can see it very easy to work with add another row in just for argument's sake and we'll call this row three and you can see it's automatically picking up styling to make sure that everything looks nice and neat and tidy it makes it easy for the end user to see what's going on by just simply highlighting each of the rows in a slightly different color so very easy if we want to add in another column we can do that very simply by coming back into columns and we'll just say add a column and we'll call this column two and everything just updates in real time we can say check by default and you can see that's very quick and very easy so if you need to add in any kind of sample tables or any kind of table information you can do that directly in the interface itself so that's tables what about things like the sliding scale for example well let's just add one in so we can add that in you can see it puts a scale underneath 
we can go through now and we can set up any parameters we want. So let's just say that we want to put a description in there. Well, we could do that. Let's say we want to change the scale value from a 1 to 10. All we need to do is set the beginning and the end scale values. And you can see it'll update in real time, at which point we can even test this out to make sure it looks the way we expect it to look and it all works nice and neat and tired, tidy. You can specify whether it's required or not, so all the kind of things you'd normally expect from any kind of form element. If we jump into the advanced section, you can see we can specify whether we want to allow a range select, so you can do that, and it'll allow us to do sort of from three through to seven, for example. Very easy. The steps, what steps we want to go up here, we can set it in increments of 1.1 or 10 in this example. We can apply a minimum and maximum label, so we could just say minimum if I could spell it right, uh, we could say maximum. And you can see that adds it into our form elements. Very easy. Okay, so that's enough of the different modules we have. I'm sure most of those are pretty self-explanatory, but if not, you can easily go in and test them out and all the options that are available for each one and the preview that's automatically on screen whenever you select and add one of those different modules in, it makes it really intuitive to work with. But that's the first step covered. So let's just say now we've gone through, created the form that we want, put all the different elements in there. Next thing we do is click on the next button and that now comes up and says, right, well, what do you want to happen when the form is actually submitted? You can put in the email address you want to send it to. You can then go through and customize the confirmation messages and the alert email subjects and so on. So you can see, we can say a new, uh, you received a new message where we could say, you have new email. Change the message you want underneath, the sort of like the success message or the confirmation message. Then we've got the confirmation email subject. Again, we can go through and customize that. Now, by default, this will pop up a success message should you actually submit the form successfully. If you don't want that to happen, you want to redirect someone to a page that has more information, for example, or a thank you, or whatever you want to do, you can just simply set up a redirect at the bottom of the page. So once the form is submitted, instead of it giving that success message, it'll go to the preferred page, and then you can put whatever you want on that page. You want to change the submit form button text? Well, you can just change that. So we can just say, submit my form, whatever you want. Next up, we've got three different options. We've got spam prevention, use Google recapture, and save messages for this form. So the spam prevention will use like a honeypot kind of thing, which is a hidden form field to make sure certain aspects are carried out before the form is allowed to be submitted. So that's very simple and very easy. If you've got a Google recapture account and you'd like to integrate that into this, you can do that. You just simply need to put in your Google recapture code and make sure everything is set up and configured from that point of view. Then you can do that, you can just check that, put your license capture key in there, your secret key, and you're all good to go. Then finally, we've got the save messages for this form. Now what that does is that'll save a copy of any message data into the form field inside your database. So it'll keep a record of everything and then you can go back and take a look at the information you've stored based upon the person that submitted that form. Now obviously, like I say, there are, depending upon the country you're in, GDPR legal requirements for that. So it's always good to make sure that you cover yourself in the eventuality you are collecting data that'll identify an individual. Once you've done that and you've gone through and you're happy with your messages and how you want to deal with that submission at the end of it, you can then go through to the next and final stage, which allows you to go in and fine tune and tweak various different elements of your form. Now, this is laid out in a very WordPress customizer style layout. So you can see if you're familiar with that, this is going to look very, very sort of familiar to you. So you've got things like your form width. You can set that in percentages or pixel values. Your direction from left to right or right to left, require text, the indicator for that. Disable submit button until the form is valid, which is a nice, simple way of making sure people can't try to click on something when they haven't completed it. It'll sort of make it quite obvious that they haven't completed the entire form. Then you've got your font weight. You can do things like normal or bold, and you can see it'll change the different fonts in there. Again, you can change colors and so on. This is the general styling. You can go through, you've got your form title, you can set things up in there. And one thing I would like to see if you are using a form title is the ability to necessarily sort of go in and change the font weight or maybe even choose the fonts that you want as opposed to not always picking up the styling that's the same as your theme. So just a little bit more control in the form title would be quite nice to control the fonts as opposed to what is currently fairly basic. Next up, then you've got your parts and your borders, your, your labels, the table formatting, if you've got a table inserted. So you can see if we wanted to change the colors of this, we could easily do that. 
the opacity, for example, all those kind of good things are all available in there. And different options will pop up based upon the different kinds of modules that you include in your form. So if you don't have a table, you won't necessarily see the table entry in this particular section. Then finally, you've got the submit button, which we can easily go in there and we can change colors of. And we can do whatever we want in there to style that and set everything up the way you want. So once you've completed styling and setting up everything you want in your form, the final thing to do is just to save that. And that'll then take you back into the list of all the forms that are part of your happy form setup. So you can see we've got a couple of forms in there. Now, how do we use those things? Well, that's very easy. Let's just go and create a new page. And in there, we'll just say add new. And I'm just going to call this happy test. Now you could work with just the normal editor for WordPress and you can use it alongside and in conjunction with things like Elementor and visual page builders and all those kinds of things. So you'll get a lot of control over how you can insert it into your design. In its simplest form, we're just going to do it inside the normal WordPress editor. And you'll see we now have a new button that says add a happy form. If you click on that, all we need to do is choose the form that we want. So we'll say we'll have happy forms, for example, insert that, and that'll insert the short code for us. Now when we save our page, we just click on publish. Once that's done, we'll preview that page, and there's our form. If you want to change it to a different form, you can simply come back in, delete that short code, go to happy forms, and this time we'll choose the other form, which is our feedback form, and we'll just update that page, preview it, and there's our customized form. So you can see there's our ability to reposition and slide all our minimum and maximum values and choose whatever we want inside these columns and put our name in and so on and submit our form all very very easy okay so that's how easy it is to add it inside the normal wordpress page builder let's take a look at something like Ele elemental so if we open up and edit this page with elemental if we come over to the left hand side and we'll just search our widgets and we'll do happy you can see we've got a happy forms widget we can simply drag and drop that into the page we'll give this a title so we'll say please complete the form there's our feedback form if it's the wrong one we can simply choose from the drop down list that'll show us all the different forms we have available once we're happy with that we can click apply and there's your form inserted into the page ready to start being worked on and ready to start submitting so once you've submitted it, if you set it up to actually store this information in the database, what do you actually get? Well, let's come back out of this and exit to the dashboard. We'll leave that page. We're not bothered about that. Let's come back into Happy Forms and just open that up. And you can see we've got responses. Now, currently, I've got two listed in there because I've tested this out and I've got a couple of test responses. So we click and open that up. You'll see it'll show us a list of all the responses who submitted it. So the first name or whatever sort of field we've got in there. Then which form they submitted. And then we can do things like we can edit it or we can delete it permanently. Now, for me, this is where a little bit of confusion comes in because I don't want to edit the form. I just want to view the form or the submitted information. So I'd like to see instead of edit, because you can't actually edit it anyway, I just like to see view or to make the poll in this example or the name of the person, whatever information is submitted first, that is clickable to take you through and view the information. It's a little counterintuitive for me. So let's click on edit. And you can see now we've got all the list of response information that we sent through. So the first name, the last name, why are you contacting us in the example of the form that we use in the age and so on. We can go to the next response if we want to and step through those one at a time until we see all the information that we want to sort of cover. And that's really all there is to dealing with storing that information in the database. Now, obviously, if you want to remove anything you've stored in the database, you can hit the trash on the individual entry or you can come back to your happy forms to your response listing and then if you wanted to you could check all the boxes or check whichever box you want and then use the trash option and just get rid of it simple as that and that's how you can use happy forms as an example i've got this page that i've used with a modal pop-up to show you exactly what it's like where you want to integrate it into a design so if we click on open form you can see there's my modal pop-up and we've now got a nicely designed nicely styled form using happy forms that fits into the style and the theme of the design that i have open in front of me and that is happy forms for wordpress totally free very intuitive I would say check it out because if you're looking for an online form builder, this is one of those ones that has some great features already included in it. Now, I don't know if they're going to bring a premium version out in the future with additional features, but I couldn't blame them if they did because they've got a great starting point with this free Happy Forms plugin.
As always, my name's been Paul C and this has been WP Tets. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we add new content. All the applicable links for this in the description below. Check it out, download it, set it up and give it a try yourselves. If you've used Happy Forms in the past, what did you think of it? Did you find it a good plugin? Did you have problems? Anything you'd like to see included in future iterations of it? Pop those in the comment section below. Let's get a conversation going and discuss what we think is a great way of working with Forms in WordPress. Until next time, take care.